Hello everybody, Hassan here, engineer, MBA and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about my investment philosophy, how I think of investments, how I think that there are different parallels and completely different hobbies, passions that can assist your investments philosophy, can assist you long term with your wealth. I want to talk a little bit about life struggles and so on. Before we do that, guys, before we talk about these important subjects, please do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, guys, just underneath this video, whether on your smartphone or your computer, it's quick, it's free, and it's really easy, guys, just to hit that like button. YouTube algorithms, everybody know how they work. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, guys. Thank you very much for the support. A lot of you have been supporting this channel. I keep repeating it in, in every single video, but I love the support, guys, the feedback, comments, feedback, input, always in the discussion below, guys. I'm reading every single comments out there. Thank you very much for the support. So last night I was, uh, I couldn't sleep uh, for numerous reasons, but um, I was listening to this podcast, right, and this is from Tim Ferriss, and some of you who don't know who Tim, Fer Tim Ferriss is, he's the author of many books, including The 4-Hour Week, uh, really a well-known entrepreneur, and he's all about, you know, philosophies and uh, fitness and just, you know, different health topics, finances, uh, the internet, digital finances, and so on. He's, he's really involved in different fields there, and he had this... Uh, this interview with uh, Ramit Sethi, who's, I've mentioned him in the past in this channel, he's like a financial guru, uh, Ramit Sethi is, is all about, you know, don't focus about your expenses, focus on how you can earn more, right, he's all about earning more, you know, focusing on the big tickets, don't worry about your $5 latte at Starbucks, Focus on how to earn twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars more per year at your job, getting promotions and so on. Makes sense, you know. He has his own philosophy, um, and and we actually had a video where he, I, I sort of iterated that you you should always double down on your passions, right? If you love laptops, computers, if you just love it and you want to have the latest and greatest, then go for it. Get the latest laptop or computer or smartphone whatever you love, but if you don't care about shoes, you know, don't go around spending, you know, hundreds of dollars on shoes that you don't care about, right, and vice versa, right, if you don't care about uh, traveling, don't go ahead and spend too much dollars on traveling, right, you should always double down on your passions, go really hard on them, but for things that you don't care about, or you probably are not affiliated and associated with it so much, you shouldn't be spending too much money on it because ultimately money is a form of resource that allows you to buy time for that passion, for that hobby, for whatever that topic is, right? So that's not exactly what I want to talk about in this video, but, you know, listening to this podcast episode, you know, it got me thinking about, you know, making this type of episode for our channel here. And I think some of you will find value from it. Uh, and this this quote here, I don't know if you guys can uh, catch that, but it says people feelings about how they are doing financially are highly uncorrelated with their actual financial status, right? Well, what does this mean, right? You know, there's many people out there, guys, that are making six digits, couples that are worth well over millions of dollars, and they are focusing on how to cut their coffee spending, how to cut their grocery uh, groceries by like 5%. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if that's what your passion is, finding deals and finding... Uh, finding, you know, cheap coupons and trying to reduce your expenses. I think it is a challenge. I definitely see the value from it. But ultimately, guys, ultimately, it doesn't really matter how much you make. What what really matters is what are your values? What are your belief system? What, your, what is your entourage? What is your education base? What is your knowledge base? And I think this is how I want to segue in, into what's the purpose of this video, right? And I think in life, we have like deep-rooted issues. We have our beliefs, we have our values. And our entourage, our environment really dictates how we view several topics in life, right? For example, right, unrelated to investments. If you are born in a family which is overweight, the family has poor nutrition habits, and people eat bad food for a living, Right, this is part of your daily lifestyle. You see this every single day. 
you witness it every single day, it's going to be very hard for you to shift towards a healthy lifestyle, towards a more nutritious based diet, towards more uh, lifestyle that requires you to make significant changes about your food, about your health, about your uh, everything with your lifestyle, right? Because this is a huge change, right? You've seen people growing up and it's going to be very hard to lose weight, for example, or even you know, to, to gain muscles and to build a body frame that you maybe wanted all your life but never could have done because, again, your entourage does matter. And I think this is an important topic to make. I think a lot of people, you know, they, 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 they take this, uh, they think that, you know, for example, in fitness, it's a question of genetics, it's a question of being lucky. It's really not, right? It's, it's a question of being hard, a lot of hard work. It's a question of being aware of the environment you're in. It's a question about looking into your deep-rooted issues, your belief system, your values, right? And I think I want to make that parallel to the same thing with investments, right? A lot of people think that, you know, people that invested early into companies like Amazon, Tesla, or assets like Bitcoin, right? They were lucky, right? Or people just got in at the right time. And if you look at any of those graphs, if you look at any of those price charts, and things were a roller coaster, right? Amazon lost like 60 to 80% of its value in 1999 to 2000 dot-com bubble, right? Um, and, you know, Tesla, we saw how Tesla stock was basically flat for a few years. You know, imagine people invested at the peak in 2014 in Tesla all the way to like 2019. They had to wait over five years for Tesla stock to break out what it eventually did. And, you know, this you can make the same parallel with genomics and gene editing companies, right? These biotech companies will take years to develop, right? Years to go commercial, right? And there is no CRISPR drug F FDA approved yet. So how can you tell that this company will be 10, 100x in the next year? You just can't, right? First of all, no one can predict it. And second of all, these things take really a long time. And again, it, take, it boils down to root, deep-rooted issues about values, about belief systems, and I think this is what I want to, you know, boil down in this video about that, you know, I just talked about fitness and nutrition, but that's, the parallel can be made in investments where you have to understand, you know, why are you investing in these types of assets in these types of companies? Is it because you want a quick, you know, 100x or 10x and you just want to cash out and, you know, buy a boat or buy a house? And there's nothing wrong with that. I think this is your life. You should do whatever you want with your money, with your hard-earned money. But ultimately, I think it boils down to values and belief system as to understanding what is your time frame, why did you invest in it to begin with, and what is like what is long term actually mean for you? Are you actually just gambling? Because in that case, unfortunately, the stock market may not be the right medium for you, right? There are casinos out there, there are gambling sites, there are poker websites or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and some people call, you know, those are strategy and gambling, whatever. I don't even want to talk about that. Uh, that's not the point of this video. But my point is that, you know, you, you really have to go deep, deeper into your investments philosophy. For Like, for example, me, I think I found a lot of parallels between different verticals, right? I just talked about uh, nutrition and fitness and bodybuilding and I saw something uh, the other day that said, you know, it's, you know, it's not that important bodybuilding or fitness or aesthetics. And I totally disagree with that. I think if you don't care about your own body, then who else will? And I think by finding this type of passion where you find a sport where you're passionate about, whether that's swimming, whether that's playing basketball, soccer, football, whatever that is, and, and really, you know, being disciplined to practice that sport, practice that exercise on a daily, weekly basis, I think that builds resilience. I think that builds discipline. I think that builds perseverance that you can apply that in different fields, right? And I, I sort of use that analogy as well in the past as well. For example, gardening, right? I found this new passion recently about gardening, right? And planting plant, like plants, seeing them grow. Uh, unfortunately, you know, squirrels uh, stole my strawberries. So that, that was quite of a annoying thing. But besides that... Uh, I think seeing those plants grow, seeing those those tomatoes grow, and coming from you know starting from a small plant, growing to what it, it has become now so far this summer, I think it's just amazing. Time is key. I think patience is key, 
And again, you can find these parallels in different, different verticals that have nothing to do in investing in wealth and finances, but they actually have a lot to do and have a lot in common, right? Because ultimately, those are beliefs, those are values, those are experiences in life that you can apply, have that framework built, and you can, I'm not saying you have to copy paste that, but I'm saying that you can build um, your latest hobby, your latest passion based on frameworks that you've acquired in the past and different hobbies and passions, right? Um, another exercise, another example I can pull off to you guys is, for example, video games, right? I used to, you know, in my early teenage years, I used to play this game called RuneScape uh, a lot, right? And I, I play that game so much, guys. Like, uh, I, I just can't even express how much I played, you know. If you guys know about this video game, you know exactly what I mean uh, in terms of level, levels. And, you know, I got to a point where I was, like, max levels in basically every single skill in that game. It, it is a multiplayer online game, so you could interact with other people. And I played that for a couple of years, and I went really up in the rank ladders. And I remember there, were, there was a summer I played this game uh, in... There was a summer, because you could track your progress compared to other players, right? And there was 100,000 players. Uh, and there was a summer, I was literally leading people's experience gain per day, meaning that I was literally gaining the most experience, making the most work in the game compared to every single player. Out there. there were a couple of weeks at a time, and that's because I was playing like 18 hours a day, like 16 hours a day, I was keep clicking. It's nothing hard. Like there's no, it was no like specific skill that required like mathematics and requires physics knowledge. No, nothing like that. It's just a simple click. It's, you could run this game on a cheap computer, cheap desktop with just a Wi-Fi network. Uh, but it requires to be perseverant. It requires to be very focused. It requires to be not distracted. You have to keep clicking. Uh, you cannot use a bot. You can't cheat. You just have to manually do the work. And I think I learned so much from that experience, guys. And it's that obsession, right? And that's what I want to talk about as well in this video. It's that obsession really allows you to uh, expand on whatever you're trying to achieve, right? And it's that obsession, guys. I, I know some of you are very, have that personality where you get obsessed with a passion, with an activity, and it, it, it could be a double-edged sword, right? One, it could really, you know, be a bad thing because, you know, it affects your life negatively. You sort of start uh, losing track on other things in life that are very important, right? Social life, your relationship, uh, your family, your friends, your nutrition, um, your weight, you know, your exercise regime. There's so many things that are very important, right? Not just your wealth, not just your finances, not just video games. There's so many things that are important, but... That obsession, right, if you can utilize it in a way where you can not just control it, but also use it as to your advantage, right, I think is that's where you get to that uh, Venn diagram where everything just fits really perfectly and you can sort of leverage that to sort of double down on your passions and sort of move forward with your goals, with your milestone, with your achievements. Uh, and going back to what I was saying here, my example with video games is, Eventually, obviously, I quit that game and I started moving that passion to to exercise, to bodybuilding, and to uh, to education. I finished my engineering degree, and I, I put that focus in other things. And I and I'm still obsessed at times with specific topics, specific subjects. But I sort of can control it. And obviously, I'm not perfect. I'm always learning. I make mistakes, just like everybody else. But I think this is what I want to convey to you guys: is that there's so much things you can learn from different verticals, right? And I think this is what I, I you you have to be careful of is when you start, you know, jumping into a topic and, for example, in investing, you want to invest in specific genomes company, genomic edit, uh, genome, uh, gene editing companies or genomics companies or just tech in general. It's very easy to get, like, stuck in a bubble, right? And this is why I listen to different podcast episodes. I read different articles from all over the place, right? There's... You know, as much as I can listen to like Tim Ferriss and Ramit Sethi talk about finances, talk about wealth, finance, financial lives and how to manage your financials, so on. I also listen to podcasts about fitness and nutrition. I listen about podcasts about technology, tech companies. I also listen to 
to different podcast podcasts about philosophy, history, and so on. And it's not just podcasts. I read, I read articles. I watch videos. I watch videos on traveling, different cultures. And I think it's really important. Um, and I don't think I don't think you you have to do that exactly in that order, right? Obviously, there different people have different interests, different passions. You obviously have your own passion. You obviously have your own interests. You have your own daily routines. And I, I highly advise you guys to really, you know, self-reflect that and see how you can benefit one in parallel to another, right? Um, there's something I, I wanted to mention is like the importance of history. Uh, and again, studying history is so important. And uh, the people, the folks in the Bitcoin, um, you know, sphere, they know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to fiat money, history of money, history of fiat, history of currencies. Uh, a lot of people are aware of that. But stepping back from that, just in general, right, history is so important to study for different reasons, right? But for one of the reasons in investing, for example, you know, there was this the history from the Renaissance experience of a period in Italy, specifically in Rome and Florence and and such areas, like individuals like Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci, Michelangelo, Michelangelo, um, different these individuals, right? You can learn so much from that period. You can learn so much from those individuals. And it doesn't have to be from the Renaissance period, it's from, the, from that area, right? It could, it could be from different uh, centuries as well, from different locations in Asia. It could be from uh, Western world as well. It could be from different locations, different periods of time. But it's really important also to find how history has enabled us to see things differently, view things differently. And you can actually learn a lot about innovation, about technology, about adoption rates, just by studying innovation technology, right? Just the idea that you this has happened in the past and it has been documented. For example, Da Vinci uh, Codex books, like he literally wrote down Almost every, all, every day of his life, right? His thoughts, how he saw life, how he saw his technology, innovation. One of the greatest engineers, one of the greatest um, uh, painters of all time. He really, you know, put things in thoughts. And you can learn from that, right? And you can read books from today's from different individuals like Brad Stone on Amazon Books. Uh, you know, there's different books as well, different different topics. And I highly advise you guys to learn from, uh, read those books and you know, get that information out there. But my point of bringing history into this is that you can actually learn a lot more than you would think, right? Just from individuals like Da Vinci, you can learn discipline, you can learn curiosity, focus, the idea that you're doing something just for passion, the idea that you're curious about something. Da Vinci was one of the most curious people out there. Like he literally wrote in his diaries, like he wanted to figure out why a bird has the, it lands on water? Why is it flapping a certain way as it jumps and uh, lifts off? How it's flapping another certain way? How like specific birds, uh, I think it's a, uh, I, I don't know how, woodpecker, I think that's how it's called, the bird type. How it's hitting the wood, uh, pecking the wood, I, I think that's how you say it. I think that's the level of curiosity we all need to have. And I don't want to indulge you guys with too much information, just get you know, overblown with it, overwhelmed. But my point here is that, you know, investing is not just about looking at financials, income statement, balance sheets, future outlook, you know, revenues, profits, uh, earnings per share, and looking at uh, Wall Street estimates and looking at stock price on a daily action. And I, I do believe those are all important terms and accounting basics. And I think you should all be aware of this. And this is part of your due diligence, not just in specific company, but just in the public stock markets and being aware that public information be available to average citizen. I think that's very important. But I think the next step to that, the next level, to, in my opinion, anyways, is that you sort of make parallels with your other passions in life, whether that's in fitness, whether that's in gardening, whether that's studying history, whether that's in cooking, whether that's in clothing, whether that's in branding, whether that's in anything that is, right, in kayaking, in different sport, different exercising. You can sort of make parallels to that and sort of learn from that, right? And I, I think it's just beautiful when you put it that way, when 
when you, you sit down, you think about, you know, what did I learn in X field? How can I apply it in Y field, right? How, what did I learn in other passions of my life that I can apply in investing, right? And why I can be okay with, you know, understanding that I have to exercise and eat well for years before having a significant type of physique that I, I appreciate, but in investing, I want everything to happen in a week or in two months. Like, why does the same type of philosophy does not apply in that, right? And these are questions that you only can answer, that you as an investor, you as, a, as an average citizen that is limited with information, but everything is online for free, that you can do your own research and come up with your own conclusion. Ultimately, this is what we want in this channel, guys, is for you guys to come up with your own conclusion doing your own research, making your own parallel, building your own passions, you know, seeing public markets differently, seeing the opportunities differently. So many opportunities out there, not just in genomics, not just in, in the companies like energy, companies like Tesla, not just in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, and so on. There's so many opportunities out there, you know, the real estate, you know, we, we didn't even talk about different metals and precious, precious metals. We didn't even talk about you know, different, you know, different uh, collectibles, right? It's the whole NFTs and so on, uh, or just art and painting, right? Trading cards, you know, garage sale, e-commerce businesses. Like, what can you do? What are the opportunities? I want to hear about what you guys think about this video. I mean, I went over 20 minutes here, sort of went rambling and started talking about parallels in history and started at different industries, how you can sort of uh, leverage that for your own benefit. Uh, you know, the idea of obsession, Right, being obsessed with a topic, subject, controlling that obsession to your benefit, right, and allowing that to guide you towards different type of levels and enjoying that process, right. And ultimately, guys, I think our our decisions in life, our decision and our out view outlook of life really boils down to our beliefs and value systems that are very, very much affected by our environment, by our entourage, by the way we were grown up, the way we see money, the way we perceive about ourselves, our identity, our self-identity, our role in this world, our purpose in this world. I think these are questions that only you can answer. Uh, and these are questions I'm always answering. I'm not perfect, obviously. I make mistakes. Uh, I always revise my outlook. I always revise some of the uh, beliefs I've had in the past. I adopt new methods, new technologies. I try to learn every single day, and this is part of growing up, part of maturing, part of growth, and it's part of, I think, aiming for um, something that something resembles to the likes that we leave future generations at, to a better place, a better world that we found it to begin with, right? So if you leave the world a better place that when, than when you found it, I think that that purpose as humans, I think that purpose as humanity is is sort of achieved in, in a way where we move humanity forward. But it is what it is, guys. I'm curious to see what you guys think about this video, what for investment philosophy, life struggles, you know, that the idea that, you know, you, you know, it, it takes, you know, stoicism to sort of, you know, move forward in your life, you know, and to be able to withstand those significant negative drops, whether that's in Bitcoin, whether that's in genomics, whether that's in Tesla stock, whether that's in different companies, big tech companies, medium-sized companies, uh, your private assets, you know, different real estate assets, you know. What do you guys think about this? I want to hear about all of this, guys. It's an open platform here. Open, go ahead, shoot it in the discussion below. I really want to hear you guys, especially you guys that uh, I know a lot of you guys spend a lot of time doing so, a lot of time than I do. So I want to hear you guys. Uh, let's share. Sharing is caring, guys. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Again, smash that like button just underneath this video. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see each other on Saturday. Thank you very much for watching and have a great, great day. Thank you.